Hi all, Mess Cup from Kaiser Power Electronics. Today I am really out of my comfort zone because this is a piece of chemic analytic equipment. It's the model Unity from Marx International Limited. It is a thermal desorber. Now I had of course to Google this to even find out what it can do. And it contains a few peculiar parts that I hope we can find inside of this because there is some different options to this model. But basically what it is, it is a part of a VOC analytic um, setup. And VOCs is, of course, volatile organic components. And speaking of that, let's just have a little bit of that volatile organic components. Cheers. To understand where this unit fits into the whole test setup, I have here a schematic overview of the Unity 2, which is the successor of this unit. Now the unit we are looking at is this part. It is supplied with samples from a sample feeder over here. It has a air server. Now these two units I do not have. They supply clean air and cold fluids and some pumps and ventilation and helium and gases to the desorber. Now the des desorber contains of some different valves to control some different gas flows. It has some tubes inside and it has a cold chamber and a heated valve. Now the sorbent trap is the cold chamber and I have uh, been able to find out that that is most likely a Peltier element being possible down to minus 10 degrees Celsius. And then it has a heated valve that can heat it up to 300 degrees Celsius. Now, What's the purpose of heating and cooling off these um, air samples, perhaps trapped in some active coal? It is that you feed the treated gas into a gas chromatographic uh, analyst, analyst machine, which is this one. And that I do unfortunately not have as well. I'm not quite sure how exciting that is, but there have to be some kind of oven with a modulator on that has to do something to analyze the gas. So it would have some quite interesting electronics. But inside here, we should be able to find some really cool um, micro valves and small gas treating, some heating and, heating and cooling parts. So let's get this torn apart. Besides the overview of the whole test system, I have here a schematic overview of the valves and tubes and the cold trap and the heated valve inside of this unit along with a list of part numbers for the cold trap for which kind of VOC it's meant. And it has some different names, high boiler trap, air toxics, water management, ozone, sulfur, custom pack, cold trap, chemical agents. So this can actually make us be able to guess what this unit was used to measure uh, from the part number of the cold trap itself. So let's get on with it. The unit is quite simple in, in itself, in its appearance, since it's only the part of a system. At the front, we merely have a LED to mark that it's turned on. It has a opening here at the front where you can adjust some uh, small manual valves and you can inject insert the samples by pulling up these levers and you can actually remove these metal cylinders and you can put in some new samples the whole back plate here can also somehow be removed and if we take a look at the back we have power in we have a pc serial connection we have a 25 pin parallel connection to the gas chromat chromatography analyzer, that's a hard word. And from the part number we can also see we have a power rating of 550 watt. So the heated valve and the Peltier element must have some kind of good power rating with a high wattage rating for this small lightweight unit. Now the whole back shield here, that can be removed just by this small knob here. Back here, there should be a heated valve, perhaps sitting underneath 
this part here. It's kind of hard to see, and as we can see, this has been torn apart from being uh, thrown out. Some of the connections are broken, pulled off. So it's not in quite as good shape as one could hope for. So let me just get as much of this disassembled as possible so we can take a look further inside the unit. And all of a sudden this whole assembly just popped out of the box. And just look at that. From um, yeah, picking out these very small Precision Dynamics Incorporated Predyne.com 24 volt DC valves, says Orifice 0.3. Uh, that must be uh, inches, I guess. I'm not quite sure, but it is for sure some uh, small uh, tubes and pipes running between them. But also have some small manual. Uh, T valves, uh, T piece valves here. Very nice stuff. Really, uh, really high quality, expensive parts here. But uh, this, I for sure can reuse for some kind of very uh, special setup. Or yeah, I do have a, a dream of playing with um, some gases to do some control to flames and such. Maybe this is just too small for for that. Unless I want to do it on a miniature scale. But now the assembly itself here. We have some um, valve control down here. We have the actuators that connects air down to what looks like a small piston. And this should operate up into the heated valve section or maybe this is the cold but it is insulated. So it could be both heated or the cold trap. It does, however, seem to have some kind of uh, heating element connections there and also have a ceramic uh, wire connection block. This should be the heat trap box. It does contain a quartz tube, which in the manual says you have to be very careful to not break when you uninstall it. It is already broken from the rough handling of this unit. On the underside here, we can see this huge block is a black uh, heatsink for the whole um, Peltier element. And on the, yeah, on this part here we have a PCB that connects with quite a lot of large gauge black wires down to the power supply. So that seems quite unusual. I'm looking forward to see what kind of uh, power supply that really is. On the opposite side of this, it seems like we also have some kind of heated uh, input here. This is rather bent and broken. But there is also some wires going up into this little block that looks like it's a heating element. And we can also see the discoloration of this tube that suggests that it has been heated up and down quite a lot. Wow, look at all this stuff. This took like forever to take apart. I have never seen anything like this. Everything is just bolted together with more bolts and nuts and bolts and here and there. It's just a complete madness to take apart. But I think it succeeded quite well. And there are so many special things in this. It's like one big custom made part. Everything seems like it was made just for that unit. Look at that double Peltier uh, uh, arrangement here. They are actually put in series, the, small, uh, the smaller and larger Peltier elements. So they, they are getting uh, re reused along with the heatsink. 
Now notice this little small arrangement here. We have a quite normal uh, cheap end switch, which, which just have a actuator there. And then this small uh, switch here will actually puff out once you have a fluid on the system. So this is actually detecting if there is uh, fluid cooling on the system uh, before you can actually activate the Peltier element. Quite a simple contraption there. Now the whole uh, cold trap, um, it also seems that it do contain uh, a means of heating up. As we can see these two power connections out here with a large band going in of each side of the whole tube. And then on the underside we have the connection of the smaller Peltier element. So um, yeah, should be able to uh, quickly warm up and cool down the uh, gas sample as it passes through. Now the small broken tube inside. We can see here that it does contain its wool parts and end stops and such still, but it is unfortunately broken, so I'm just getting rid of that. The whole heated valve thing. We have the um, input port from the cold trap, then we have the sample port and a heated gas port. And then this can get actuated from uh, the uh, valve setup underneath. Quite uh, not does not move so well anymore, but there seems to be some kind of um, heated needle where the gas would pass through this part, go down through here, and yeah, must be inside the chamber here to the uh, sample tube. Quite a special contraption. The smaller heated um, gas valve or gas inlet on the side, we can see that it has a small, small heating element sitting underneath. The uh, fluid switch and switch off um, the uh, electrical yeah, it's a whole there's a switch block where we have a uh, input and we have two ports out. Nice 24 volt controlled, can always be reused for something. Then it has what I can only assume is four very high quality, perhaps uh, PT1000 temperature sensors. I think this one is broken, yeah, it seems so. But at least uh, three are still in good shape. Then the whole uh, actuator underneath the um, the heated valve chamber here. This is the, the the valve part or the driving piston of it. And what I find really funny on this is that the whole head here on the actuator that is just a M5 screw that has been machined down. We can actually see that they have turned down some part of the thread here on a lathe. And it's all just nuts and bolts and uh, some spacers. Looks very... Uh, we just fixed it with some repair-like. Not quite sure if this is original. The two valve assemblies that we took a short look at earlier. Some very nice hardware here. micro valves. The control board or the it does have a name it was the unity interconnection PCB reversion 3. does not contain much of components so this is just a interconnect board but there is a some kind of gas sensor sitting here the black one with the red tube connect connecting to it. Could be a pressure sensor, which I assume since it's only with six pins. And it seems like only four of them are actually in use. So besides all these nice parts of small valves, tubes, uh, electrical parts, 
there is still the whole uh, box underneath here, which I know do have the power supply, but also something in the front perhaps. Pretty peculiar um, enclosure here because it's like uh, I removed eight screws and everything just spilled out. Uh, it has these plates that seems to be holding everything together inside. But that just made everything just, yeah, everything just came loose. It has the, these double plates and the whole uh, inner chassis for to control the uh, airflow. And then some kind of overlapping plates in the front and I, I'm pretty sure if I remove these four screws, everything and the rest will just fall out of the cabinet. Now what did come out was uh, a large power supply. Now what we have here is a Lambda Alpha 400 watt power supply made in the UK from 06 January 05, so 2005, start of that. You can see it contains uh, a A module, E module, 5 volt at 60 amps, 12 volts, 8 amps, and 12 volts, 8 amps. So that's a nice uh, high power, versatile power supply. Now on the control side, there was this huge plug of uh, yeah, power going up to the uh, Peltier elements and the other heating elements. So that's a lot of 5 volts, I get guess then there seems to be some regulation or switch mode power supply sitting here it is controlled by a uh, infineon sab c160 cr microcontroller running at 16 no 5 megahertz that's a uh, unity control pcb Primarily uh, SMD components and pretty much nothing on the underside of that PCB. So most likely just uh, the serial and parallel interfaces to the PC and the gas chromatograph and then some internal control logics for this unit which is only contains of like yeah maybe 10 or 20 measure points did not seem to be that many uh, data collection it's more about control in this unit i hope you enjoyed this teardown and i am sorry that i could not tell you more details about the cold trap the heated valve arrangement some of the small gas valves and the whole uh, setup going back and forth there um, some of the more yeah easy to identify components that was more easy to tell something about that but if you did service this if you did use this please leave a comment and let us know what the different parts were made for or what kind of repair or failure you would see in these please uh, educate me teach me something because i really want to learn more about all kinds of weird technical stuff like this so until next time see ya Thank you.